always trying to figure out what kind of man I wanted to become, and I'm still trying to figure out what kind of man that I want to become. I always knew I was different. I didn't know that there was a term for the type of person that I was. I went into my transition just wanting to be happy. I'm glad I, I'm at the point where I'm able to shave. South, south, north, north, east, west, never in a hurry. Right. Now don't be scared. Don't be scared. Shaving is about being confident. Oh, you, you're doing fine. You are doing fine. I'm at the point in my manhood where I'm actually happy. It's not just myself transitioning, it's everybody around me transitioning. It's not just myself transitioning. It's everyone else around me transitioning. That's an ad from Gillette. Let me just uh, take you back a little bit. Gillette ran an ad uh, a couple months ago where they wanted to redefine manhood. And uh, they had an ad with men barbecuing and their children wrestling and playing in the mud. And they kind of had the men, the fathers, separating the children from wrestling with each other. And this was supposed to be the new manhood. Boys don't race. Boys don't challenge each other. Boys don't wrestle. Boys don't fight. And this whole Gillette series, this whole what I call the Gillette woke marketing series, plays on. And, and that ad that you just heard was uh, a transgender male. And I found out what this, uh, this I, I, I finally figured out what this whole thing, how you read these uh, articles. When they say it's a transgender male, that means it's a female, uh, born female, who's transgendering to a man. And when they say transgender female, that means it's a man who's transgendering or transforming into a woman. Now, I have nothing against this young lady, young man who wants to become uh, a man, or this young lady who wants to become a man. I have, I have nothing against it. If that's what you want to do, have at it. Don't normalize the process. That's the only thing I say. Don't don't normalize. Don't make this normal. Don't. In other words, this is not a normal thought. People are not born one way, and all of a sudden they think they're something else, and they have the operation to become it. I don't. I don't. I'm not one to normalize that process. I think that's a, there's a there's a there's a mental condition going on with people who are like that. No different than someone who considers themselves a cat. You have people who want to walk around in baby diapers. That's not normal. Adults don't want to be treated like babies and fed like a baby and then and, and live sexual lives like babies. That's not normal. But it's, it, you know, have at it. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm just not wanting to normalize something that or someone's born a female. All of a sudden, they, they say, I, I'm, I'm a man trapped in a female body, so I'm going to have an operation. I, I just don't think that is a normal practice. But if she wants to do it, go ahead. Do it. But what, I, what I'm against, not what I'm against, but what I want to start off the show with today is I want to talk about the no, this, this, this Gillette ad campaign that wants to redefine what it means to be a man. Now, we've gotten away from it over the last week or two, what we do every morning called the question of the day. And I want to ask a fundamentally basic question. What is a man? What is a man? What does it mean to be a man? 404-741-1067. Because Gillette is trying to convince us that being a man is just something just so easy to do. That being a man is just something, if you just wake up one morning and you want to be a man, you're once a female, you want to be a man, that's it, you're a man now. You you put take hormone pills, you take take shots and, 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 and testosterone shots and pills and all this stuff, and you grow hair on your face, and that's it, you're a man now. No matter what your biological uh, 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 systems say, you're a man. No matter the fact that you have a uterus inside of you, it, no matter the fact that you have fallopian tubes inside of you, and that you, you, you drop eggs once a month, that doesn't matter. If you just say and feel you're a man, you're a man, period. And I want to ask the question today of the smart audience, the smartest audience in radio land ever. What does it mean to be a man? What is the definition of manhood? Because if the definition of manhood, according to Gillette, is that you grow hair on your face and you could shave now, then doesn't that upend all that we know through all, almost the entire human history on this planet? Doesn't that transform everything we're led to believe?
Doesn't that change and upend everything? And when you start to go down this road to where just growing hair on your face due to testosterone shots, if that makes you a man, then what does it mean to not be a man? If that makes you a man, then why can't the guy who spits out 50 children, takes care of none of them, doesn't even know who they are, is he also a man? If it's biological, then then doesn't he become, doesn't he have access to say, I'm a man, even though he doesn't take care of his children, even though he's not a, 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 a presence in the home, doesn't he become a man also? If anyone can transition to be a man, and vice versa, anyone can transition to be a woman, then what does it mean to be either? In other words, if everything is racism, how could racism possibly exist? If everyone can be a man or a woman by virtue of a oper an operation or pills or shots, then what does it really mean to be a man or a woman? So what is your definition of manhood? And just because you grow hair on your face and you can shave, then does that make you a man? 404-741-1067. But the more dangerous factor in this ad, to me, is that there are millions, hundreds of millions of fathers every single day with sons who are in a bathroom at some point shaving to go to work, whose son, six, seven, eight years old, I'm sure it's going to happen in Matt Door at some point, and, and, and it, they're going to come into the bathroom, they're going to sit on a toilet seat, or they're going to stand on a toilet seat, and they're going to watch daddy through eyes of, of amazement, and they're going to watch daddy take a razor to his face and shave. And that young boy is going to sit there, and he's going to be amazed, and he's going to say to himself, just like I did when I was that age, and I watched my grandfather shave, I can't wait till I have a speck of hair on my face so I can do like Papa. Every single man who has a son is going to have that pleasure, that feeling. It's like throwing your first baseball with your son. And it's a bonding experience. And what does it mean that when you redefine that experience to say that anybody, if they take a pill, can now experience that same feeling? I remember when I first shaved. It wasn't my grandfather. The first person I saw shave was my grandfather. He had a stone cup or bowl, and he mixed his own shaving cream with his own horsehair brush, and he mixed it up, and he put it lathered on his face, and he took the razor, and he shaved, and I watched him from the toilet. I'll never forget it. It's still etched in my brain forever and ever, and I stood on that toilet seat and watched him shave, and when he left the bathroom, there were some remnants of shaving cream, and I scooped it out with my own fingers, and I rubbed it on my face. And I took the razor and pulled it over my face and it burned and I stopped and I rinsed it off. But the first person that taught me how to shave was my, my, my stepdad, Bruce, Bruce, excuse me. And Bruce used magic shave. For those of you who are familiar with magic shave, magic shave requires no razor. It's basically a, a shaving cream that essentially burns the hair. And he used magic shave because he couldn't use a razor on his face because he had sensitive skin. And I watched him shave with magic shave. And he sat me down in a bathroom at 13, 14 years old. And he showed me the correct mixture so you wouldn't burn your face. Magic shave is still sold on the store shelves to this day. He still uses it. And I remember that experience of him helping me and showing me how to shave and taking a, a he said you can use a spoon or you can use a knife, but he used a plastic kind of uh, the, 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 uh, kind of a, a utensil that he scraped the shaving cream off, which shaped the, the, removed the hair also. And I'll never forget going through that experience with him. And that was, the, that was a bonding experience for me. 404-741-1067. Gillette is trying to redefine what it means to be a man. And it's simple. It's coercive. It's devious. It's, it's, I say, sinister in what they're trying to do to our culture in this country today. I have nothing against anybody who's born a woman and wants to transition to a man. Have at it, like I said. 
What I do have against, what I do have a problem with is in a world today that you're trying to redefine what it means to be a man. And once you redefine what it means to be a man, then you redefine what it means to run a culture. And once you redefine what it means to run a culture, you have destroyed said culture. It's the Shelley Winter Show on the New Talk 106.7. It's time to go to the Haviland Express Lube Traffic Center with my brother, Matthew Dorr. Starting off with the crash, Shelley Traffic Report.